So today we're going to talk about the differences between the 81A2 engines and the 83 engine. So the 81A2 engine are essentially the same engine. So first difference is the primary drive. The 82 engine and 81 engine have a primary drive using two independent rows of chains. The 83 engine seen here does not use primary chains but instead uses straight cut gears as most modern bikes. There is an advantage to a chain drive in that it has less loss to friction as straight cut gears at the extra cost of maintenance. The clutch itself in the 82 also works completely different because there's no push rod. The 83 does have a push rod and works the same as any other modern engine. The 82, however, uh, does instead use a stack of Bellyville washers and pushes, that pushes the clutch plates forward to the face of the clutch. The pressure plate in this case doesn't move as it's stationary at the front of the clutch. Instead, the center of the clutch is attached to a plate in the rear of the clutch that pushes the clutch plates forward. The clutch actuator is on the case, the side case of the engine, and it pushes the clutch inward instead. This also makes it difficult to change clutch plates because as you see here it requires you to use a clamp to press the clutch inward so that you can remove the clips that hold the front pressure plate on. The next difference is the kickstart mechanism. Here you can see the 83, there's a spring behind this gear and the gear itself moves the clutch. Aside from hiding the spring behind the gear, it's the same as most any modern bike. The A2 is different. Instead, it uses a quarter of a gear that looks like it was handmade teeth. Uh, this gear uses a flat coil style spring and it also has a problem catching. When you go to kick it over, it will not go down and it will get caught. And you have to put it in gear, rock it back and forth, and then put it back in neutral and try again. So before giving it a big kick, you need to see if it catches first. All pre-83 Makos essentially have the same issue. And there are a lot of broken kickers out there, kickers that have been welded on because of this. As you see here, I, I had an eaten tooth and I tried to file down to see if I could resolve this issue by filing down the first couple of teeth, but it didn't work. Transmissions are also different between two engines. Here you see the 83 engine, and it is more like a modern bike's engine. There's a main shaft, there's an output shaft, shifting cam, shifting forks. The one thing I will say is that the 83 engine did not use needle bearings on the free rotating gears, like the 82, 81 did, but it simply uses brass shims. The 84 engines switch back to needle bearings, so 84 and up all have needle bearings. Here you see the 82 engine, and it has three rows of gears. This is because it has to change the direction of the output shaft, since the clutch and the crank are moving in the same direction. The last thing you'll notice is that it doesn't use a shifting cam, but instead it uses a shifting plate. This does make for some very smooth shifting. There are a few other differences. Although they use the same piston, the connecting rod was made wider at the crank pin in 83. 83, they also added a choke to the carburetor. And the 83 engine has reeds. The 82, 81 engines do have aftermarket cylinders now that you can buy that have reed um, in them. And in 83, they did release the Alpha E, which is basically an 82 engine with reeds on it. Uh, the bearings also changed in 83 with the new engine layout. There are now three rows of crank bearings in the 83 engine. Although the 82 did have a monster double row angular bearing on the crank gear side, the 83 has two bearings, a roller bearing and a ball bearing. The 82 engine had that chain though, which is why I was using the double row angular bearing. In any case, you can always tell these bikes apart just by looking at the side cases.